Yeah. Okay. Okay, bye. L love you. That was corporate. Apparently, my videos recently have been too easy and not miserable enough. So for the final challenge video of the year, we're gonna find out, can he be Pokemon with only using metronome? I can do miserable, right? To start off the challenge, we're gonna have to get past the tutorial. Unfortunately, this early on, there's no easy way to get metronome on a Pokemon, so we're gonna have to figure out a way to get through the mandatory battles without using any moves at all. We're gonna have to use a trick we used during our beating the game without using any moves challenge. Around the tutorial area, when you first start a new save, random items spawn. These could be potions or pokeballs, which are useless to us here, but they could also be antidotes. After checking nearly every item spawn in the area, finally the very last item was in fact an antidote. This is huge, because if you try to use an antidote in battle on a Pokemon that isn't poisoned, it won't consume the item, but it will skip our turn, letting Nimona take us out without breaking our only use metronome rule. We're forced to catch this Lechonk, since our only other option is to fight it, since you can't run from this encounter, and now it's time for the excruciatingly slow Follow Maridon part of the tutorial. After doing absolutely nothing for 10 minutes, we reach the Southern Lighthouse and meet Arvin. Surprise, it's another mandatory battle. We use the same strategy as last time and just sit there spraying antidote on our pig as it slowly gets tackled into submission by a squirrel. We're not quite done with the tutorial battles just yet, but coming up soon is the first battle we actually have to win, so we better prepare for it. Usually, you're restricted to Pokemon from this area if you want to build up a team before finishing the tutorial, but as we all know, this game is held together by sticks and glue and you can kind of do whatever you want if you try hard enough. If you head up the west side of this valley and manage to target a Pokemon who's just close enough to the other side of this ledge, you can start a battle on the other side, warping you over the gap. This gives us access to basically the entire game map before even finishing the tutorial or getting to ride on a ride on, as well as giving us access to any Pokemon we want for our team. There are a few obstacles that you maybe shouldn't be able to circumnavigate without Maridon's help, but another Pokemon warp always manages to get us where we need to be. From here we make the long trek all the way up the mountains past Cortondo, past the massive windmills of Area 1, and through the Asado Desert to the Porto Marinada beachfront, and grab our first metronome TM. On the way, we also catch the Pokemon that will become our dedicated team for the challenge. A Psyduck called Sokka, a Sableye called Mai, a Metatite called Gyatso, a Jigglypuff called Varric, a Chansey called Suki, and a Ryalu called Aang. Not the most well-rounded team, but our options for Pokemon that can learn Metronome are fairly slim, and having a strong defense is really important when battles are going to go super long probably, due to the fact that half the time our moves aren't even going to deal damage. Now we can actually play the game, since we have one Pokemon that can use our one single move. We head back to the starting area and battle Nimona for the second time. First one, here we go. Oh, hell yeah. Good roll, good roll. Hell yeah. <laughs> Only the Team Star fights left until the game opens up now. Not too much trouble, and we're so overleveled that we have plenty of time to roll into good moves without fear of getting knocked out. Just one shot at this. It's not helpful. There you go. That'll do. Good job. Good job, Sokka. You're doing great, sweetheart. Finally finish the tutorial. The world is officially open to us, and we no longer have to break out of bounds to explore. We have a bit of work to do before taking on Victory Road, though. Once you've found a TM in this game, you can craft copies of it at any Pokemon Center, assuming you have the materials. I decide to go around the whole map and unlock every gym location and hunt for the materials needed to make more metronome TMs. Igglybuff Fluff and Hapini Dust. Igglybuff Fluff is really easy to get, Jigglypuff aren't exactly uncommon, but Hapini Dust requires catching or beating Chansey or Hapini, which are actually pretty rare, and Chansey will just sprint away from you if given the chance. I lost this one after 30 minutes of hunting for one. I find another Metronome TM on the ground, and I use the Hapini Dust I received from catching Suki to craft one more. It takes a half hour of searching, but I eventually find enough Hapinis to have four Metronome users total, so at this point we're ready for some battles. One of the best parts about the Scarlet and Violet Gym Challenge is it's basically just a boss rush of gym battles. No root trainers or extra dialogue required, so let's start rushing these bosses. Katie is in too much trouble, Sokka does decent damage and Varric finishes the job after metronoming into a guillotine. 
which sadly misses, so he follows up with a seismic toss. I just want to hit one guillotine in this challenge. Please, God, let it happen. It would be so funny. Varric would have probably lost us the battle with Teddy Ursa here if it wasn't for Q-Charm activating, letting him fire off, like, three not very effective moves in a row before KOing it with Swift. Ruin my coin flip every time. <laughs> That'll probably do it, right? Yes. Nice. Okay. One gym down, seven to go. Brassius next, and Pedalil nearly solos the entire team before Gato uses Psyblade to finish it off. Speaking of clutch legendary signature moves... Malignant <laughs> Chain, that's the new one. Oh my god. And it... Yeah, that'll do. Mai then cleans it up with a Frost Breath to win the battle. Iono next, but first we have to fight Nimona. For those of you new to the channel who haven't maybe watched some of the other challenges we've done, we literally never have to win during these rival fights to progress the story. So, we bring a single level 12 Lechonk. Kill me. Oh no! Next we have to fight Iono's goon squad and we get some moves that are a little overkill. Aang, who didn't participate in the battle because Ryalu can't learn Metronome, evolves afterwards. Of course, he's not dead weight. Lucario, for some reason, can learn it. So once we have another TM, we'll be up to five actual battle-ready Pokemon. Unfortunately, despite kicking the goon squad's ass, when we go to fight Iono, we lose. And lose. And lose. I look up the location of the third metronome TM and hunt for like an hour for the final three Happini Dust to make the last TM I need. With a full team, I head back in, ready to win and lose even more. I swear the paralysis chance of Spark is like 80%. Apparently, blind luck just isn't going to cut it here. I grind some levels and grab a leftovers from Mai. I would usually lead with Mai here to take down Wattrel, but this time I lead with Aang because I just have faith in him. Oh, gas. We got a free move. Oh, Miss Maggie is first? That's wild. That might be big. Question mark? Nice! Oh my god, Ang's the goat. Oh my god. Oh, he's so good! Proc? Crit too? <laughs> he's attacked through that one too. Head sm Oh my god, he's so good. Soloed that thing. Oh my god. We know we can beat the rest of the team, we've already done it. It's not happening, it's not happening, we're winning this battle. It's about goddamn time. <laughs> time to take on Kofu, and he's honestly an absolute nightmare. Dealing with his first two Pokemon is easy, but that Corbominable is no joke, and it can one-shot every Pokemon on our team bar Varric. Good thing I missed. Come on. Come on, just any attack will probably do it, right? Oh, no. Good game. And a crit, too. Oh, that sucks. Takes a few more tries, but I eventually get back to just his final Pokemon. Please. Got two shots of this, come on. Tank this. Come on. Any attack will do it. Any attack. Come on, please, Barry. Please. Please. Yes! Real quick, if you're enjoying the video so far, please consider subscribing. My goal for 2024 is to reach 100k subscribers and hopefully go into YouTube full time. It's ambitious, I know, so any support you give goes a very long way. And you can always unsubscribe later. I really hope you enjoy the rest of the video. Fifth gym is Larry and Kamala can't hit Sableyes, that's one down for free. Next is to Dunsparce and it kind of wreaks havoc on my team, taking out Aang and Mai before going down to a Chloroblast from Gyatso. Raptor is another Pokemon that can one-shot 
basically my entire squad, and I'm forced to use healing items to get through it. After wiping my entire team, bar Mai, who I revived, it's only able to 3-shot her due to its powerful return not hitting ghost types. This means I can alternate turns between using healing items and using metronome. But I'm rapidly running out of efficient items to use and a crit would end the fight at any moment. Side note, you would think that using items in a challenge like this would make it inevitable that we'd eventually beat the whole thing, but we're not doing any trainer battles or any other methods to gain money for the whole challenge, so every single healing item we have is extremely precious to us. Luckily, we eventually roll into Perish Song, so I'm able to revive another Pokemon and let both Seraptor and my faint, winning us the battle. Clearly in need of some levels, I look up how to level up quickly, and as it turns out, it's actually super easy to force Chansey and Blissey to spawn. Makes me feel a little stupid for wasting so much time hunting a peony earlier. Basically, certain effects from sandwiches can force certain types of Pokemon to spawn, almost exclusively those types. So, using the shittiest sandwich I've ever seen, I get the normal encounter power-up and head to a location where the only normal types are Blissey and Chansey. I grind out levels until the whole team is roughly level 50. Gyatso, Sokka, and Suki all finally evolve too. Obviously, we don't get any new moves because we already have the best move in the game. The Ghost Type Double Battle Gym is next and we get super lucky. Just banger move one after the other and completely blitz through the entire fight. Good move. And it burned. <laughs> That's wild that that killed. Time to take on the Psychic Gym, and unfortunately, this gym trainer has a Grumpig with rest. I swear he gives me trouble in like, every single challenge I do. Eventually, I take it out with a Lucky Crunch, and the rest of the team is in too much trouble. Next we have to fight Nimona. Ang gets to really live the airbender life for a second, good for him, he deserves it. Like I said earlier, we don't have to win this fight, but the experience at this point is nice, and also I forgot to just bring Lechonk, and it's too late to back out. We're about to lose to Meowth's flower trick, but Gyatso hits a clutch gunk shot to win it. Now it's time to actually take down Chula. We're down to just Blissey and Golurk against her Florges, and I'm starting to think Blissey is maybe not a great Pokemon to have with us. Petal Blizzard manages to knock them both out, and we have to try again. Ridgeraff tries to set up a Reflect, but Mai rolls into Brick Break and says, No, stop that. Ang, my goat, my golden boy, my champion, comes out and uses Explosion, so uh, he's out for this battle. Gyatso uses Tail Glow, which buffs his special attack by three stages, and Espather's Opportunist activates to also boost its special attack by three stages. That's okay, Gyatso can probably clutch it out with Lunar Dance, which kills itself. What the hell is going on? Am I Pokemon for unionizing? I guess it's a good thing we have Blissey as such a special tank. It uses Calm Mind, which means it's Bathra also Calm Minds. Not to worry, after that Psychic, we have two more turns, just have to... Are you kidding me? Stop using setup moves. Take three, I guess. We're not getting through this as Bathra this round. Nice. Did nothing. Oh, because it's not, it's not very tight anymore. Hell yeah. Grusha is the final gym leader we need to take on, and we're a little overleveled, so he shouldn't give us much of a problem. Shouldn't being the operative word. Stop using mist. I've used mist like eight times this challenge. Why does this keep happening? Start using a better move all the time. Come on. <laughs> it's always missed! Why is it always missed? Oh, Jesus Christ. Okay, fine. Whatever. Give me another Aura Sphere. Dude, that was great. And now their hurricanes are gonna auto hit because they rained down. <laughs> Cut down. Yeah, that's okay. I didn't want to win the battle anyway. It's fine. 
It's alright. I was planning on saving all of my revives for the Elite Four battles ahead, but to get through this gym battle in a reasonable amount of time, I decided to burn one on Lucario. Which is kind of funny because it means he gets to eat his own healing wish, so good for him, I guess. There we go! Oh, thank Christ. Finally, it's time to take on the Elite Four. Oh boy, I sure hope there's not a steep level curve. Oh, there is? Well, I'm sure it's not utterly debilitating. Oh yeah, no, this is unwinnable. Maybe that was just some bad luck. Yeah, no, this sucks. Alright, back to the Chansey Culling. I make an even stupider looking sandwich this time. Looks appetizing. We might have overleveled a little bit for this one, but I promise this doesn't make it any easier. I spend the rest of my cash on revives and hyper potions, hoping that it's enough to get us through all five battles. If it isn't, we're kind of screwed. Okay, let's try this again. Strong opening, please, Sokka. Yep, that'll do it. Barak's cute charm comes in clutch and lets us take out Donphan, and now we're into Suki versus Rika's Camerupt. I take back everything I said earlier, Suki is literally the best Pokemon on our team, and it's not close. Oh my fucking god! Oh, that looks so cool. Oh my god, eat shit and die. Oh my god, that's perfect. The battle couldn't be going better. Oh my god. Just two more. Just two more. Come on. Finish it off. Come on. Okay. Okay. Big. Huge. Finish it off. Come yes! Get him. Get his ass. Poppy is a bit of a nightmare, and probably our hardest fight of the entire challenge, even assuming we get good metronome rolls. Our strategy for the whole Elite Four here is to bring Blissey out to steamroll every special attacker, and just figure it out as we go along for the physical attackers. Fortunately for us, Poppy has four physical attackers over five Pokemon. Not ideal. Our solution to Corviknight is actually pretty simple. Just let it kill itself with Brave Bird recoil and let Aang finish the job. We nearly get utterly swept by this Bronzong, and to make matters worse, Aang metronomes into Trick Room to give it a guaranteed first move against my entire team. Luckily, with only Aang left, we get a Sleep Powder which gives us time to heal up before facing Magnazone. A special attacker, which means Blissey's on the job. How long could it possibly take to knock it out? 11 minutes. It took 11 excruciating, resource expensive minutes. That was some of the worst luck I have had on this run. Anyway, only Tinkaton left, and luckily we can tank its hits decently enough. I go for the risky play here, knowing that if Sokka doesn't roll an attack here, we'll lose the fight. Yes! Oh my god, I thought it missed the second one. Oh, oh my god. My heart. It should not be as stressful as it is. Realizing I'm getting scarily low on healing items for the final three battles, I give each of my Pokemon a Wiki or Agua Berry, which you can't use outside of battle, but in battle, a Pokemon under 33% health will eat to restore 33% of their health. All except Blissey, who has probably healed over 500 health the past two battles from Leftovers alone, so she definitely gets to keep that. Larry is a lot less of a problem than Poppy, with three special attackers on his team that Blissey completely walls. I do love how dramatic Solar Beam's animation is here for how little damage it's doing. To Raptor next, and we can absolutely abuse our super high HP Pokemon like Sokka and Varric to deal a load of recoil damage before finishing the job with. Never mind, we're giving Brave Bird to finish the job, I guess. Oricorio gets walled out by Blissey again, and we get a lucky poison, which means we don't have to waste our precious PP on damaging it. We can just use our tactic from the start of the challenge and skip the turn with a status healing item as it eventually faints to take damage. Altaria next, and as a special attacker, Suki can kill herself, apparently. Alright, I guess. We get another lucky poison, so same deal, no need to waste turns. Finally, it's time to take on Flamigo. I thought I had this within the bag, since I could swap to Mai, making the AI go for a Brave Bird, since close combat wouldn't affect the ghost type. In theory, if Blissey swapped in and took a full HP Brave Bird, Blissey's 400-ish HP being converted into Brave Bird's 33% recoil would mean Flamigo would nearly immediately KO itself. However, as it turns out, Flamigo went for a close combat on Sableye because its ability is Scrappy, which lets it hit ghost types with fighting type moves. We can still win the fight without much issue, but we're going to have to burn through so many more revives than we would like. 
I had a choice here between committing to making Brave Bird recoil, taking it out, or pinning all my hopes on Aang. And I chose to trust my boy, and it paid off. Oh, huge. Let's go, Aang. Brilliant. Hassel's fight goes pretty interestingly. Oh no. <laughs> Alright, we'll deal with you later, I guess. Oh, that's not ideal for us. That's not great. Oh no. No, stop swapping Pokemon out. Oh my god, this is so bad for us. Stop doing that. What the f <laughs> What are the odds of that happening twice? Oh. Alright. Hi, buddy. Guess we deal with this guy first, I guess. <laughs> we actually knock out his ace first, which I guess is good to get out of the way, and Noivern and Dragolaggy are pretty handily walled by Suki. Flakpool and Haxorus gave us far more trouble than I expected, though. Good. Oh! We can't, we can't just, oh my god, that's that's a debilitating amount of health that it gets back from that. Sludge Bomb, huge. Let's go! So huge. Just about. I do something big. Be huge, something flashy. Come on, Sokka. You know what? That's even better. <laughs> Let's just tank another Dragon Claw. That's all we want. Saving up your energy for the big flashy hit right now. Get him with your. I'll take it. Defense drop? Nope. I can solve. I can solve. Come on. Hell yeah. <laughs> oh, this has been so stressful. <laughs> Finally, with all four Elite Four members defeated, we only have 10 revives, two Hyper Potions, and one Max Potion left. Supplies are low, and it's looking really bad. Until Rika just heals all our Pokemon for free. All my resource calculations go out the window, we're so back. Now with a fully healthy party, surely there's no way our remaining items wouldn't be enough, right? Bomb. Poison? Hell yeah. I know it's going to die eventually, but I'd like to it die, die before it gets another, like, seven quick attacks on me, so that would be... Okay. I mean, I guess both can happen at the same time, I guess. Whatever, man. <laughs> oh, what, what happens next? She goes, um... It's, it's Avalog next, I think, right? Damn, it was Go-Go. Damn, it, it, was the, it was the other one. It was the other one. Get me out of here. Get me out of here. Oh, huge. Oh my god. Thank you, Halucha signature move. Yes, that was the correct decision in this situation. Please continue. I pressed one button. I've been pressing that one button the entire time. You don't know what you're talking about. Alright, this thing knows Earthquake, so I'm going to... Yeah, and I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to trash slice it. Okay. Alright. <laughs> Careful. <laughs> I'm not sure that's going to... Yep. Yep. Would have been cool. Would have been huge. Let's be very clear. It would have been really sick if it worked out. I like the vision. I like the vision. This? Okay. Well, we tried. <laughs> An attempt was made. Oh! Oh, we survived on one! I looked away. And this time, got a. Hell yeah. Any special attacks are good against Avalok. That, that's you. Alright. Get your table out of here. Bring your fish in. Take it out, take it out, take it out, take it out. Yes! Sound attack. This, 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 this. Fuck. Yeah, that's okay. That's fine. I understand. I... This. No, okay. <laughs> Get good rolls, it's only it's a three shot. Sink. Poison! Poison it! Poison it! Poison it! Poison it! Yeah! Hell yeah. Fine. Nice. Oh, we're so back. We're so back, gamers.
Now we have only her final Pokemon to deal with, and as a special attacker, Glamora should be easy enough to deal with, right? Admittedly, I've been extremely lucky this battle up until this point, and I definitely start paying for it here. In the first five metronomes, we use three physical moves, one useless move, and guard swap of all moves, giving Glamora our ridiculously high special defense stat. The physical moves we used also means that Glamora's toxic debris sets up two layers of toxic spikes, making revived Pokemon that much weaker. To make matters even worse, I accidentally click attack without any metronome PP left and you struggle to KO Suki with recoil, forcing me to burn a revive and waste another turn on curing the poison. Now we only have one hyper potion left and a few super potions. I realize the most efficient way to heal Suki at this point is to just let her get KO'd and use revives on her, which puts us on a very short clock before we lose the whole run. Get a hit in, a single hit, come on Suki. Time to get to the job. No! Oh, you're such a... <laughs> I am centimeters from the finish line, and I just have this large, blissy-shaped weight on my ankle <laughs> holding me down. And now I have to heal up, but I mean, I only have things that heal 60. <laughs> Not a lot to heal by. <laughs> I, I just gotta... I don't know what to do here. I just gotta burn the rest of my revives, I think. Okay. Buddy, I need I need this from you. Ah! <laughs> oh my god. After I don't have a choice. Have to revive Suki again. I only have two revives left. At least revives give me so much breathing room. Surely, with all this health, this is so much breathing room to manage something. Seven metronomes left. Come on, please, please. <laughs> Yes! Let's go! Yes! Finally! Oh my god! What a nightmare! My god, what a nightmare! This shit sucked, by the way. This was the worst thing I've ever done. That was miserable. I hated every second of that. I hope you enjoyed this video because I... Happy New Year, everybody. This was supposed to go up before the New Year, if you could tell by the intro. I didn't even remotely get close to it. It's like halfway through January. The things I do, the things... <laughs> I'm... I'm close to tears. It, it, this was... This was such a grind. 